Hello, I'm Louisa, and I'm going to tell you about adding a little bit of AI to your UI, which is, of course, your user interface. I don't need to tell you, but um, I'm going to show you how to make a chatbot with Wit AI. Why make a chatbot? Because you can use natural language as the interface, whether it's via chat messaging or it's relatively easy to add a voice interface, and um, that is what people naturally use. So it is natural for them. You have to think, um, like the book Don't Make Me Think, you have to think about your least tech-savvy user and program for them. Your least tech-savvy user is a child, uh, a s person who has never seen a computer before, and what they do know is how to speak their own language. And um, in that way, um, everyone is prepared for that. So having a chatbot may, in fact, replace your mobile app if you're a business who wants to target people who don't know anything about computers, which is still a lot of people. The APIs to integrate machine learning, chatting, um, and even speaking and voice recognition are getting simpler and cheaper all the time. Everybody, every big company is involved in it. They're developing their own and putting out the APIs and adding it to, if they're not making their own APIs, they're still adding it to their own websites and mobile apps. Who's making them? Facebook makes Wit AI. They actually bought Wit AI, I should say. Uh, Google bought API.ai. IBM developed Watson. Microsoft has developed something called Lewis. Amazon has Alexa, although I'm not sure how much machine learning is actually behind it, and basically everyone else is using it. Also, the bots will be conscious soon. <laughs> they will be our overlords, and you're going to have to pick a side. <laughs> i show you Exhibit A. No, I am human, and you are a robot. Prove you are a human. You are a damn robot. <laughs> I am a human and you are a robot. Those are two Google Homes using Cleverbot to have an argument between them. That was from Cbot Chat. If you weren't following that on Twitch, you should have been. Uh, it was very entertaining. Um, so I made mine, sort of, with Wit AI. And why did I choose it? because it works with Node.js. That makes it very simple. It is free to use completely. It's open source on GitHub. It's very highly customizable, but that does mean you'll put some more work into customizing it than something that is less customizable. It's owned by Facebook, who we know from React, do test things very well before releasing them. Reasons not to use Wit AI include that it is slightly more complicated to implement than paid options like Google's API AI or IBM's Watson. Um, <laughs> also, I didn't have this in the slide, but it's very much in beta. And they are pushing updates to their system all the time, which can be breaking. Uh, <laughs> The other, so it's not, if you're really relying on it for your business, that could become a problem. Hopefully that'll stop happening soon. They are also owned by Facebook, which was a reason to use them and is also a reason not to use them, as we know from React and from probably all having Facebook profiles. Sometimes Facebook likes to claim that things you make using their stuff are theirs. And getting in bed with any big company means they may very well be watching your data, not, though it's still a better option than trying to program your own machine learning algorithms or create your own AI for most of us. Some of us, I'm sure, will go and do that. So you get started with WIT by creating an account and getting an API key. I'm not going to demo that for you because I think it's pretty straightforward. And then you will create a story in their website, which is the
the conversation that your bot can have. Most simple bots will only need one story, although you can create many. And in the story, you'll define custom intents and entities. And once you've done that, you can write functions that will tell it what those do. I'm going to show you now their interface. And it looks like this. There. That's my bio, or my profile. Um, and up here on the plus sign, I can create a new app. And here's the app I made. Her name is Grace. And here is the conversation. She only has one story. Here is the conversation she can have. In theory, she said, <laughs> if you say, hi, Grace, or any number of other greetings that you can train her in here in understanding, um, and you can tell I'm pointing with my cursor right here in understanding. Um, you can tell her that if she didn't understand it, like here, in fact, she's kindly gone and thrown an error so that I can show you how you would fix it. You would just click over to the understanding tab and say, hi, Grace. The sentence that I put in there has an intent, uh, and the word intent is there for you. Uh, from the drop-down, an intent of greeting. And the entity will be a greeting. The entity that gets put on the context will be a greeting. Uh, and in my case, I've said all greetings are greetings. So the kind of greeting is any greeting. <laughs> and she should say back, hello, how are you? Uh, and you can see that that error has disappeared for the moment. Um, so what is happening when you do that is when you initiate a new wit, uh, it will get a context object, and each time it takes in something like high grace, it will add the intent and the entity onto that object and pass those into the function. Uh, it's having a little trouble learning right now. So you can see it's made it an error again, even though I just trained it. Um, but so it will pass those into the function that you call. So if she says, I'm fine, thanks, uh, or if a user says, I'm fine, thanks, I've told my bot that it should run a function called getEmotion, which will take the emotion off the context object, pass it into this sentence, and say, I'm emotion to hear that. What can I do for you? Um, and generally, all of the intents will work this way. You just have to set, give a name to the intents and entities that you want and pass them into the functions that you're going to write uh, separately. So this is back to here. That's how you create a story. I'm sure that all looked very straightforward. Um, and then you will clone the repo. You don't actually have to clone the repo from NodeWit, but I recommend that you do. You can just npm install and require it into your program, or you can git clone uh, and npm install. But the cloning the repo will give you a much better starting point in the code. Don't fear the repo. Um, and you can start coding right into it. Um, as I said, you'll set props on the context object and add actions to the actions object. And it will talk to its own node modules and call back to the website and understand your conversation. <laughs> and basically, it's, it's quite a bit of magic. You don't really see it happening. You just pass those in, tell the function what it should do with that information, and uh, and it doesn't. <laughs> um, so most actions that you uh, would want it to do that aren't just small talk will require an integration of some API or another. I integrated weather to get forecast from open weather maps and um, Wolfram search query to get general queries. And I will show you that over here. Um, 
in my document. And I hope you can see the comment that this is the WIP starting point. They'll provide you everything, all of this. Um, I'm letting you see my API key. I'll change it tomorrow. Um, till then, go crazy, just ping it. Um, <laughs> and you can see that here's the actions object. And inside it, I'm, uh, they, it comes with the send action. And inside it, I'm adding new actions. So everything below here, I've added. And so in the actions object, which will be the names that you are describing in the web portal, um, these functions. Uh, these functions have to match up with those. So get forecast is here, and get emotion is here, and they, never mind these, uh, they will call these asynchronous actions, um, and calls to an API are generally asynchronous, so you're going to want to use your promises, and call to the API, get the weather, and pass it back. It places it back on the context here. Um, and your bot will just say it back to you. Um, and in theory, uh, she would do this right here when I node groups.js. Um, but in practice, <laughs> yesterday, Wit pushed up uh, bot breaking change to their system. But maybe she'll say hello. Her name is Grace. I say hello, Grace. She said hello, how are you? <laughs> it's the smartest bot ever. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Um, I will try, just for fun, to say I'm fine, thank you. Oh, oh well. She was pretty confident about that, just so you know. Um, I'm just going to leave that behind. And uh, run back over here. So in theory, <laughs> you can then integrate your bot with Facebook Messenger pretty easily. It's uh, owned by Facebook, so they make that pretty easy for you. Um, you can use an HTTP server. You can use an Express app. And I added this today to say, well, Thomas Edison maybe said um, this quote that's often attributed to him, results, why man, I've gotten a lot of results. I know several thousand things that won't work. And the way I programmed that or the way they programmed their website didn't work today. So here are the... Uh, a couple of things you might want to read. Chatbotsmagazine.com, which is a thing, <laughs> has written an important article called How Bots Will Completely Kill Websites and Mobile Apps. They also have a complete beginner's guide to chatbots. Um, here are the Wit AI docs. And uh, Medium has a nice article that is a review of natural language APIs for bots. That's all.